Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eterno and welcome to episode 17 of Network Chat Programming. So last time, of course, we did the awesome, awesome task of checking out our server, setting it up and uh, and having it receive a packet and that worked and was awesome. So uh, that's great. But now let's go on to actually uh, implementing a method for the server to really manage clients. Okay. So at the moment, Right, we uh, we're not using this send function of the server, and the reason is, you know, we're we're receiving this packet here, and we're printing it out to the console, of course. But then, um, if we wanna if we wanna reply to that client, we currently have no way to do that, okay? And it's not as simple as you think it might be, okay? Because the reason is, uh, we don't know the client's IP address. Of course, when when you create a server and when you connect to the server, when we actually launch our client, so if I go to login.java here and hit the debug button. Um, you can see that we actually specify an IP address and a port. And of course, that is the IP address of the server, the location, the logical location of the server and the port of the server, right? So the IP address and the port, we specify that. But when the server accepts a client connection, you know, we haven't handled that. We have to say, okay, there's a new client connecting to me. Let's actually store it in some kind of list so that I now know where the client has connected from and like when he connected, whatever, his name, whatever, IP address, port, so that if need be, I can send him a packet, okay? Right, so how can we do that? Well, client.java contains all the information we need, right? An inet address and a uh, and a port number, right? In fact, let's just, uh, I just wanna group this a bit better. Let's maybe bring this down, oh, I can see the addresses up here. But let's maybe bring these like that and then separate the GUI components here. Diagram socket, I'll bring that up here. J panel, I'll bring that down. Okay, cool. I've just kind of reordered this. Um, and thread, we might uh, just keep like here or something. Okay, so, um, you know, this has all the information we need and it's a client. But the thing is, obviously, it's got all this GUI stuff. It's also got a... Uh, it's also got these these sockets. It's just way too heavyweight. So what we want to do is we want to kind of create, um, we want to kind of create, um, like a client, like a server client kind of thing. Okay, and essentially it's like a struct, but of course Java doesn't have structs, so we'll have to use a class. But essentially it's just going to be a class that just contains a few uh, a few values. Okay, so over here in uh, in server, in our server folder, I'm going to right click on that, hit new, and hit class. And what I'm really going to call it is pretty much client, but I'm not going to call it client because we might get confused with client.java. This is in a different package, by the way, so it, 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 it will add us credit with uh, with the name client, but I'm just, I'm just going to call it server client. And the reason I'm doing that again is so that we don't get confused between the client that is in the Cherno chat package and the client that is in the server package because they are different things, of course. I'll hit finish on that, and here we have our server client class. So what kind of things should we store about the client, right? This class exists to store information about uh, a client that is connected to us. So the couple, couple of things, right? First of all, it probably makes sense to store the name of the client, okay? Again, this is kind of irrelevant, but, well, no, it's very relevant, but what I mean is it's, re it's irrelevant to the networking part of this, but it is still relevant because we wanna be able to, you know, bring up um, a list of our clients. We want to ident identify them by name, maybe instead of by addresses, because we're humans and we like names, not numbers. So public uh, string name, and we'll also use um, that's probably yeah. Okay, so we'll we'll have an inet address, which is uh, the IP address of the client. Let's just import that, of course. Um, <clears throat> we'll also have a port number, of course. So public int port, and that stores the client client's port. Now, the other things that we need is a public final int ID and a protect, uh, why the hell is it protected? Public int attempt, okay? And uh, we'll set it equal to zero. So first of all, what is ID, okay? Port, address, and name, I'm sure you guys can uh, figure that one out. But what on earth is ID and attempt? Well, ID is, uh, is, is kind of like the identification number that we give to our client, okay? And the reason we need this thing is because um, if we just use something like address as the identifier, okay? Let's just say someone from your house is connecting to this server that's at my house. Now, that creates a bit of a problem in a way because um, you might have a brother, you might have another person in your household with the same external IP address who's actually connecting to my server. So suddenly we have two clients with the same address problem. Port number, okay? Um, hmm. 
basically there, there can be if if we if we were to use address and port as the identifier so in other words we might have something like 192.168.0.10 and then the port number which is like 253443 or whatever and we actually kind of made that into an identifier by getting rid of all this and that was the identifier uh, that's cool but sometimes there can actually be the same port and the same IP address and that, that is if you connect with uh, the exact same client on the exact same computer <laughs> to the exact same server uh, you can some you can actually sometimes duplicate the ports okay so uh, it's a bad idea to um to, to do that because it's so, in, in some scenarios you might actually end up with two clients connected with the same IP address and the same port so what we want to do is kind of make it random okay um, we, we want to make this a randomly generated number that is unique and we'll talk about actually generating a, a unique ID for the client um, in the future but that's not important right now now attempt what is attempt now an attempt is really um, used for uh, for a lot of things because for example let's just let's just picture it this way I think it's probably gonna be the, the best way to explain it um, if, uh, if, if if a client suddenly like his internet connection drops out for a minute um, <clears throat> if a client's internet connection drops out for a minute uh, the server's gonna like basically um, try and oh, oh, and the server just has to contact the client for some reason it'll send a packet and it, and it might expect a reply but it doesn't get a reply so then it says, okay, well, I'm going to increment attempt by one. So and this is the second attempt of sending the same packet because it's been a while. It's been like, I don't know, five seconds and there has not been an automated reply. So let's try again. And it does that. And we, we could set it to say, let's just say five. Okay. Basically, when attempt is uh, greater than or equal to five, then just drop the client. So in other words, kick the client kind of. Kick, basically get the client out of our list of connected clients because clearly that client is not connected connected anymore now how does this uh, why does this happen how does this work the most um, the most uh, I guess uh, the most popular use of this is probably going to be um, checking to see if clients uh, have disconnected without formally disconnecting so <clears throat> if someone was to simply uh, you know go to like file exit or uh, j just hit the close button on their uh, application we could handle that and we could say okay if um if the person has like hit alt f4 or command q or um or just hit the uh the the x button the close button on their window then let's just send a packet to the server being like oh yeah i've disconnected now if um if the client quits by uh holding down the power button on his computer or unplugging it from the powerpoint or going to task manager and ending that process um without actually you know without actually giving the the operating system and the program a chance to close then um obviously no packet's going to be sent to the server being like i'm out so uh that's why the server every five seconds or so maybe every two seconds up to you really probably depending on the load of how many clients there are every 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 couple every few seconds or so the, the server will just send a a um a behind the scenes packet to the client and be like you know hey are you still here and um and then the client will be like yeah bro i'm always here um, in, in reply. So that's how that's going to kind of work. That's why attempt exists. But of course, if the server does send, send a packet being like, are you there, bro? And the client just does not reply. And the server sends that packet five times and the client still hasn't replied, then it drops the client. Okay. So public server client, the constructor here, <clears throat> they'll take a few parameters. First of all, the name, second of all, the, uh, the INET address, of course, then the port, then the ID and the name okay and we will set this dot id equal to id uh we'll also set uh this dot address equal to address this dot port equal to port and uh this dot name equal to name all right sweet uh oops we did this twice whoops okay and let's just order this properly all right cool so we've got the name the id uh the ID should probably be last year. The name, the address, the port, and the ID. Okay, and this class, of course, all of these are public, which means that we've got basically read and write access to them. Um, and that's how we're gonna use them. Okay, so the ID should probably be private, and we should probably make a getter for it, just because uh, we don't wanna be able to um, accidentally uh, get ID. We don't wanna be able to accidentally um, write to it. Oh, we won't be able to anyway, because it's final. That's a good point, but uh, that's all right. We'll still make a, um, a get ID function here. 
Okay, sweet. So this is our server client class. Pretty simple. Now let's see it in action. So how how is this gonna work, right? When a client gets connected to a server, like how does the server manage these clients? And it's, it's really very simple, okay? All we need to have here is a private list containing server client, which is of course this class that we just created. So private list server client clients equals new uh, array list and server client. All right, great, let's import all of this. Make sure that you do import the utility uh, interface here from the util class instead of the um, AWT list, because that's just a, like a GUI list. If we want an actual list here, an actual array. Um, and we've got clients now, which is brilliant. That's all we need to do, right? And basically, whenever we get a specific packet, which we will talk about uh, next episode, we'll talk about how to actually send um, a packet that isn't a message. In other words, how we can kind of send like a coded p packet being like, this is this is a connection packet. This is a disconnection packet. This is a, a timeout packet or whatever. How we can actually send these specialized packets so that um, the server knows how to interpret them instead of just, you know, printing the message and, and sending out the message as if it was just normal. Uh, text message. So, what we'll do here is when we receive this packet, yeah, j j just to test this, we won't actually leave this here, but just to test this, we're, we're going to go ahead and say, uh, once we get this string here, we're going to go ahead and say, let's create a new, let's let's just go clients.add new server client, okay? And then the parameters that we need, of course, are name. So, we're, we're going to go ahead and just call the name yarn for now, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, INET address. So how do we get the address of the client that has just sent us a message, right? So we've just received a packet from a client. So how can we get the um, the source address and the and the source port? And the, the thing is, uh, it doesn't matter if you're using UDP or TCP, the header file of both of those uh, protocols contains always both the destination address and the source address, okay? So this packet actually has the source address of where it came from. So we can simply access that by hitting up packet.get address, and that will return an INET address here. We can also um, hit up uh, packet.get port to get the port, and then the other thing we need is an ID. So we'll just set that at like 50 for now. It's cool. All right, and that's it. You can see that it doesn't give us any errors, and that is how we add a new uh, server client. Brilliant. So, what we can do now is I'm actually just going to cut this from here and make it an object so we can access it here. Oh, uh, actually, no, no, we don't need to do that. I'll, uh, I'll just go clients zero. So, system dot out dot print line again, just just to test this out. Um, uh, let's see. Um, probably just print out. So, okay, clients. So clients.get0, again, this isn't the safest thing to do, but it is temporary, so chill. Client.get0 dot, get zero dot uh, uh, address. Oh, okay, hang on. Um, inet address should have a, uh, inet address should have a way to convert it into a string. Um, oh, it does have a two string, yep, two string. Okay, so it overwrites objects two string. Brilliant. Plus that plus the port number. So clients dot clients dot get zero dot uh, port. Okay. So we just printed out the client and the port as as it's connected, and then we print out the actual string. Okay. So let's let's just launch this and see what happens. So I'm gonna just bring my console up here. Um. Up here. Then I'm gonna go to login and just uh, launch that quickly, but just not a not actually uh, hit login on that. And then I'm gonna, of course, start the server by going to server main and hitting the debug button. Here it is, server started on port 8192. Then I'm gonna flip over to this login um, uh, window here. Type in yarn, localhost is the IP address of the server and 8192 is the uh, the port of the server. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit log in. So what do we see here? Well, if we actually uh, just get out of that basically and quit that, um, and go back here, we can see that this is the information that got printed out by this line over here. Uh, this line, okay? So the address to string gave us 127.0.0.1, which of course is the same as localhost, that is the numeric representation of localhost. 
of the word localhost. So in other words, um, in other words, if we were in this login screen, if we were to type in, uh, instead of going ahead and typing in localhost, we could have just gone one two seven dot zero dot zero one because that is actually equal. That actually equals localhost. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so let's flip back to our running server main here by the debug uh, tab. Okay, and then this is the port number. So of course, when we actually create a server in client, oh, sorry, when, whenever we create a, uh, well, I guess whenever we open a socket by, uh, as the client, you can see over here that in, in the open connection method, um, this diagram socket does not take any parameters, which means that if I mouse over this and get the Java doc, um, it can start, it constructs a datagram socket and binds it to any available port. Okay, so in this case, it's chosen five six nine one two fifty six thousand nine hundred twelve because of course ports can be pretty much anything from zero to six five five three five, which is two to the power of sixteen. So well, six five six five five three six is two to the power of sixteen. But anyway, so that's anywhere between uh, that's anywhere in sixteen bits. Uh, we can have a port number. So that, that's probably more some in-depth episode content there, but um, that is the the source IP address and the source port of where that packet came from. And of course, now that we've added it to our, um, if I go back to server here, now that we've added it to our client's array, we now have a client, we now have the details of a particular client here. So that is episode 17 of Network Chat Programming. If you guys did enjoy the video, please hit the like button. And again, 200 likes, one video per day, 300 likes, two videos per day. Um, and then next time we'll hopefully talk about uh, how we can send a connection packet to the server and then say, okay, this is me not just sending a random message. This is me telling the server I'm connecting to you. So yeah, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.